You are surrounded by a life-giving supply of energy. It fuels your body's operations and processes, a life-giving electrical energy charge that flows through your veins and into each and every cell in your body. It powers the nervous system, allowing it to transmit electrical messages to the brain and throughout the body like a battery, enabling us to think, move, and do other bodily functions. Your vitality and life energy are closely related to how strong an electrical charge is. If a man is prevented from being expressed in a reproductive way and is also protected from artificial stimulation, it appears to generate some kind of dynamic power or energy. And the relational, nutritional, and motor sectors might apply to their mutual benefit. On the other hand, Persons who abnormally or excessively use energy along sensual lines may see it as a physical desire that is solely accessible for having physical relations. Consequently, the system as a whole is denied the potential for general stimulation and vigor. In fact, the reproductive department of an adult appears to be a form of energy storage battery, a genuine reservoir for surplus energy, synergy, which appears to be a powerful dynamic force may be used as each person chooses. It may be wasted in lustful and aberrant sensuality, or it may be partially utilized for reproduction that is acceptable and the remaining portion used in lustful acts. Perhaps it might be used to enhance and increase the nutritional, physical, and mental lives. This amazing finding has significant practical implications. The retention of sensual energy makes resources accessible for all the other competing bodily processes and activities. The more bioenergy that can be used, the better the body's systems can perform those activities and tasks by decreasing oxidative stress and increasing cell integrity preservation. Man is generally the principal or positive pole in the great battery of human life. When a woman provides, the other one is either receptive or negative. The electrical forces of the universe may now flow into both when one is connected to the other, creating a circuit. But the natures of the husband and wife need to be adjusted to harmony in order to build a perfect battery, and it shouldn't be weakened by mistreatment. In other words, each should be tuned to resonate harmoniously with the other. Where these conditions exist, the body gathers a reserve of life energy that expels all worn-out atoms and gives people fresh vitality who are fatigued and revives brain cells, making the brain a more effective tool for mental tasks. This creates a reservoir of personal charisma that naturally pulls people to the person. The respect of everyone with whom he interacts, as well as everything that is good in the world. This healing is gained by properly, wisely, and purely exercising physical intimacy. Our bodies contain many elements with different electrical charges, including sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. These charged particles, also known as ions, may be used by practically all of our cells to produce energy. These components, as well as others related to bioelectric energy conduction, are also present in the prostate and seed. The seed and prostate contain large amounts of zinc, a substance of special value. There is little research on the possible implications of pleasure and ejaculation frequency on physical and mental health outcomes, despite the topic's importance for human gender roles. This knowledge gap can be attributed to a general lack of interest, methodological difficulties, and still practical superstition. In order to determine how ejaculation frequency affects general and mental health outcomes, this research combines material from several domains. In nations where pleasure is still severely prohibited or condemned, culture-bound disorders have been documented. Pleasure guilt is a term used to describe phenomena in which people feel that their behavior regarding pleasure is inconsistent with moral norms. One topic being researched in the field of reproductive therapy is abstinence. There is still more research needed to determine specific periods and their effects on sperm quality. Studies conducted in the 1950s indicated that the human prostate gland possessed higher levels of zinc than the liver, muscle, brain tests, or blood. We could not, under any circumstances, consider these zinc levels to be trivial. Phosphorus is another essential component. A typical male releases 226 million spermatozoa during ejaculation. 
These are abundant in iron, nuclear proteins, lecithin cholesterol, phosphorized lipids, and hormones. The intriguing hypothesis that thinking is essentially a stage of phosphorus metabolism in the brain was put out by English scientist Dieter Evans. It brings to mind the German biochemist's proverb, no thought without phosphorus, even claims that phosphate levels rise during mental activity, including thinking, and he draws the conclusion that this indicates that the thyroid hormone, iodine, catalyzes the oxidation of phosphorus molecules in the brain during thought, even claims that if we place a fresh brain, human or animal, in either pure alcohol, sulfuric ether, or olive oil, we will produce a brilliant phosphorus solution. This might be the cause of the phosphorescent brain glow that a live brain emits in a dark environment, as seen by Dr. G. W. Kreil. Evans recognizes the source of the creation of electric nerve currents for the oxidization of phosphorus in the environment, which results in an electric discharge in this phosphorus oxidation in the brain. Kreil has demonstrated that the brain, which serves as the body's central storage battery, is where the electrical energy for the nervous system is produced. Thus, it is evident that phosphorus, oxygen, and an adequate amount of thyroid hormone are required in support of the regular production of brain electricity, and that there will be insufficient brain activity if any one of these three components is missing. Since the brain takes up oxygen three times more than any other portion of the body and is known to be rich in phosphorus. Additionally, it cannot operate correctly without the thyroid hormone's catalytic action or without iodine, which the thyroid needs to produce its secretion. When the electricity created does not come from an external source, the electric field is endogenous and powers the body and is being produced internally as a result of the cells activating. Essentially, every organ and cell in our body employs electric voltage differences and ionic currents in the performance of vital daily functions. This electrical activity affects the behavior of the surrounding network of cells. It seems that these endogenous fields of electricity circulating throughout our body fuel many of the regeneration processes and activities that take place within the cell structures of the body. We are the regenerating walking electrical energy stores that keep us alive and in this world of existence. It's possible that, as a species, we are all powering something enormously powerful, anything that falls outside of our own range of perception. It has been proven that ATP, the body's readily accessible bioelectricity, is necessary for stallions in order to maintain the integrity of the spermatozoa's membrane. To put it another way, the life and integrity of the seed depend on bioelectric energy. It is logical to expect that human spermatozoa would likewise be subject to comparable processes, because in order to generate energy and keep the seed, we would need electrical resources. If this is the case, it would appear plausible that there may be a biological cost associated with the constant expulsion and required replenishment of fresh stock. Through dysfunctional mitochondria, the efficient availability of this energy, also known as ATP, has been shown to contribute to oxidative stress. It appears that ongoing seminal fluid loss will need ongoing seminal fluid replenishment and might not promote the best mitochondrial health. Additionally, such a mechanism can cause oxidative stress and hasten the aging process. It should come as no surprise that the organism pays a price for the expenditure of life force. It is an unchanging rule of nature and a generally accepted biological concept. Reproduction carries a cost in terms of higher mortality or slower growth of the adult organism since energy used for reproduction is not available for growth and maintenance. A person that reproduces in a given year often has a decreased rate of survival or may do so in the near future. Patients who have seed loss as a result of a nocturnal emission, intercourse, or pleasure report that it causes them to feel weak, anxious, and sleepless. Classical Chinese medicine is at the foundation of etiological hypotheses for the condition. In the 19th century, similar disorders were discussed in Western civilizations. Pleasure was frowned upon and strictly forbidden for reasons mostly related to religion. It was often thought that illnesses including weakness, headaches, 
anxiety, and generalized physical weakness are caused by both nocturnal emission and pleasure. It is surprising how much culture and society have to do with how psychological stress develops. Every illness shares a significant moral element that is crucial for the emergence of psychological stress and anguish. The syndromes fall under the category of an anxiety condition. There is currently no evidence to support a biological link between pleasure or nocturnal discharges and any of the aforementioned symptoms. However, since the occurrences really cause people to experience significant psychological anguish, knowledge of them is crucial for everyone. As a result, an organism may have higher long-term evolutionary fitness if it delays reproduction or reduces the amount of energy it devotes to present reproduction. If there were a finite supply of energy available to every living thing, they might consume it any way they pleased. We may invest a large portion of this energy back into ourselves for the goal of regeneration, or we can use it to carry out the activity of reproduction. The more bioenergy that is accessible, the more competent our cells are to work, and the less oxidative stress and tiredness we will endure over time. From the standpoint of nature, it would appear that the goal of our life is to procreate, but from the perspective of a person, perhaps this isn't necessarily the case. The detailed investigation of brain areas that are directly active during ejaculation is hampered by limited temporal resolution capabilities. It's still unclear how frequently men ejaculate and hormonal factors work. Future studies that focus especially on ejaculation frequency and its effects on mental and overall health are required. This allows for effective research designs and might produce results that are founded on evidence, which could then be further analyzed and understood, as opposed to extracting information as a byproduct from other studies with a different emphasis. Procreation may not be the top concern for everyone. Health and longevity often are. There are no rules in this situation. Each individual must choose the principles they want to live by and the way they want to live them. We may direct our energy toward the crucial aspects of our lives as we grow attuned to our source of energy. Seed retention is crucial for many people because of this. It enables us to reroute our erotic energies so that they may be used in other areas of our bodies and lives that need them for proper operation. Greater upkeep, more regeneration, and eventually more life are made possible. By the way, if you found this helpful, don't forget to show some love. Tap the like button and also subscribe to our channel. Comment below on what you want to see next. See you in the next video. Do you know what distinguishes men from boys? The answer is straightforward, discipline. Consider not letting go of your life force as entering immortal mode. When the environment is unpleasant, the body will always go into self-management mode or immortality. This applies to any unsettling and self-development habits you may adopt, such as taking cold showers, exercising, fasting, and of course, resisting those persistent urges. Addictions and urges may appear difficult to overcome. Due to the lack of sex or releasing of your seed, the body enters self-management mode to adjust to whatever is going on. Immortality entails absorbing life's power and utilizing it to power your body. It entails making the most of your hormones, providing vitamins and minerals to your body, fixing your central nervous system, opening blocked body barriers, and relieving stress. It also entails becoming more attractive and self-conscious, as well as a manly person, a powerful individual with a greater purpose. Consider a vibration scale. At the top is the man who still has his balls full to the brim with sheer life-giving fluid while the man at the bottom is devoid of all life, lazy, and wastes his time. Keep in mind that your essential strength is enclosed within your fluid. It gives you all of the things you require to continue your immortal behavior. You're going to build strength and muscle. You are in good physical shape, and your brain is functioning at its peak. It has always been at. Your ability to commit will improve as your self-assurance grows. Persevere and achieve your objectives, you're taking back your legitimate place in society as a man as you've gained some authority. This adventure will have an impact on physical and mental health. 
If you want to encounter these manly health advantages as a guy, you must break the PMO habit. When you take part in PMO, your cortisol, prolactin, dopamine, and norepinephrine levels all rise to unhealthy extremes. When you oversaturate your neurotransmitters, it may be the root cause of your fatigue and lack of energy. Men should limit how many times they release their C because the core of a man's crucial presence is destroyed each time he will have to produce juice. By avoiding PO and returning your neurotransmitters to a healthy level, you enable your brain to return to normal. You can now deal with distress effectively because your concentration and stability have improved. You can now utilize your body's natural sources of energy to heal many parts of it because the need to produce juice has been alleviated. Prolactin levels fall while androgen receptor levels rise. One of the most valuable assets a person belongs is testosterone. Testosterone is required for your androgen receptors, as well as many other processes in your brain and body. As your nofap streak lengthens, you will notice a progressive rise in muscle description and fat loss. As a result of all of these factors, some men have reported that their jawline is becoming more outlined as a result of the decrease in body fat. You can eventually move forward with your life and catch up on everything you've been lacking. If you were heavily addicted, you will notice a significant difference only during the first 90 to 180 days of your path. PMO is a coping strategy. Unfortunately for some men, this is much more than a coping strategy. Instead, it's become the go-to solution for all of their problems. This is an unfortunate reality for some men. Let's pretend they failed an exam. What do you believe they will do? Yes, they have returned to PMO and pronoun. Assume one of their family members has recently died. How then do they handle the stress, PMO? Because you haven't emotionally matured yet. Several more men in their late 20s and early 30s are still at heart toddlers. They serve no manly function. They are incapable of set clear limits. The end of PMO represents maturity. You're merely maturing. A man who has discipline is separated from boys. With this discipline, you stop living in the fantasy of immediate satisfaction and desire more out of women in life. If you have previously experienced significant trauma, you may benefit from counseling to confront your emotional issues. This may take some time, but the spiritual, physical, and mental levels are the most important because you're now trying to deal with the actual problem rather than relying on a way of coping with it. Lust is a sin that affects your whole spiritual landscape. Consider looking through a dirty camera lens. You'll have trouble seeing, just like when you're covered in uncontrollable lust. This has an impact on your relationship with God, other creatures, and even the entire globe. By letting go of PMO, you will be capable of taking in more of what the world has to provide. You could see precisely once you remove the fog of urge from your eyes. Because you are not squandering your time, you will have an easier time attracting girls. Even newborns can sense the power within you. Each day of your life must start with a loaded weapon that just keeps on filling with power. Don't forget to show some love. By the way, click the subscribe button and then hit like. See you in the next video.